Blessed are you, Yehovah our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves in the words of the Torah. Barukata Yehova Eloheinu Malach Haralem Asher Keshanu Bamitzvata Vetzibenu Lo Asak Ben Vere Torah. Please, Jehovah, make the Torah's words sweet in my mouth and in the mouth of all your people, the house of Israel. May we, your children, all of Israel, know your name and the name of your Messiah, Yeshua. And may we study your Torah simply because it is good. Blessed are you, Jehovah, who gave us the Torah of truth. Remain standing as we read from the scriptures from the Torah. We're going to be reading from Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 6, from the half Torah. Isaiah chapter 61 through 3, and then from the Brit Kadashah, we're going to be reading from Yaakov, or James, 1, 22 through 25. If you listen closely to what Yehovah your God says, observing and obeying all his mitzvah, which I am giving you today, Yehovah your God will raise you high above all the nations on earth, and all the following blessings will be yours in abundance if you will do what Yehovah your God says. A blessing on you in the city, a blessing on you in the countryside, a blessing on the fruit of your body, the fruit of your land, and the fruit of your livestock, the young of your cattle and flocks, a blessing on your grain basket and your kneading bowl, a blessing on you when you go out, and a blessing on you when you come in. Hayom utam Yahova lo yak, Elyon el kal goye ha rets, Ubau ale yak, kalhab karoth, ha el, vihiz goa ki tishma, beko Yahova lo hayak, Barukata biar, Abrahak ata basade, Barek, Baruk peribit nak, Ufri admat ufri, bem teek shkar, Alfa yak, im shatot sonek, Baruk tanak, um shate, Baruk ata bobek, Isaiah chapter 60, 1 through 3. Arise, shine, Yerushalayim, for your light has come. The glory of Yehovah has risen over you. For although darkness covers the earth, thick darkness, the peoples, on you, Yehovah, will rise. Over you will be seen his glory. Nations will go toward your light and kings toward your shining splendor. Kumi ori kiba orek ugbo Yehovah layak sarak kinkene ha hoshek Kasha Eretz Verafal, Lumin Valaik Yizrach Yahova, Ukpodo Aleyak Hareya, Vihauku Koyim, Rolek Umlakim, El Nogach Zarkech. In Yaakov, chapter 1, 22 through 25, don't deceive yourselves by only hearing what the word says, but do it. For whoever hears the word but doesn't do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror, who looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what he looks like. But if a person looks closely in the perfect Torah, which gives freedom and continues, becoming not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work it requires, then he will be blessed in what he does. He beat El ha Hamerhu Vaklaek Ubraku Shikach Mahdato Abal Ham Shakif Batora Hashleme Torat Vecherut Um Hazik Bar Ashe Aineu Shome Ev Shakech Kim Ose Bifoal Ashrech Lish Haish Hahu Bema Asehu. So blessed are you, Yehovah, our God, King of the universe, who gave us a tour of truth and everlasting life for our midst, and blessed are thou, Yehovah. Oh, the giver of the Torah. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. You can be seated. I think uh, Isaiah and Bethany are looking, what, uh, I think it's still September 15th. So save the date, September 15th, when he and her become one. Amen. So that's exciting. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Again, we have Pastor uh, Samuel with us. He's going to come and you can either deliver the word or then do your ministry or do your ministry and deliver the word. However, you're going to you're going to preach first. Presentation first. OK, so hallelujah. 
So um, he is from Liberia. I, I met him the, for the first time and picking him up at 1 o'clock in the morning in Richmond. Uh, he called and said, where are you at? I am cold. I have no idea why he's cold coming from Liberia. He should, he should be used to that kind of weather. We picked him up at 1 o'clock in Richmond, and uh, so we've uh, been talking, having some fellowship, and looking forward to even going to Liberia. So you all are welcome to come uh, when we go. He has a great ministry there, a very powerful ministry there. Um, he shared uh, last night, and that was very insightful. If anyone knows anything about Liberia, he'll be able to share that with you, and uh, you'll have time to ask some questions uh, from him. But at this time, let's uh, stand to our feet and welcome the man of God, uh, Pastor Samuel Yahweh. Amen. Good morning to all. Yes, I did. It's an honor to be here this morning. I'm excited to be part of the Messianic congregation. And I'm learning a lot. And <laughs> I'm gradually being converted. <laughs> Amen. I'm Pastor Samuel Yahweh from Liberia, um, a son of a late bishop, um, Bishop Glebo Yahweh, who served as the bishop of the African Glory Pentecostal Church. Um, I high five siblings, but three was shot in the um, Civil War in 1990. So we had two now as a life. My father was shot um, during the war, right before my eyes by the rebels. And it's something that I cannot forget about easily. My mom also died 2014 from the Ebola epidemic in Liberia. If you ever heard about the Ebola, she died. <coughs> so I'm a pastor of the Lifeline. Can you put up? I'm a senior pastor of the Lifeline Ministries. Lifeline Ministry is an interdenomination ministry um, located in Liberia, Monrovia, from a community called Chubo, Chubo Community, okay. a very poor community um, that have about 4,000 uh, inhabitants. We presently building a, a hundred, I mean, 1,500 seater church, that is 1,500 seater capacity church when completed. But at present, we have 350 active members. That is 75% of the members are youth. So I deal with a lot of young people. Um, I have a young, youthful congregation. And so you know what, what we mean when we're talking about that. So this our Sunday worship service, one of our Sunday worship service. So that's where we are. You can see the congregation, and I'm sharing the word. Thank you. Uh, the Lifeline Ministry is comprised of the Life Foundation School. The Life Foundation School is a school, tuition-free school that takes care of orphans and less privileged children. There are some kids who, 75% of the kids are orphans. They lost their parents during the Ebola epidemic. And most of them are staying with their uncles and nieces and nephews. So they come to our school. It's a tuition-free program. My wife is the one in charge. She's at the back. Amara, very beautiful woman. Very beautiful. And we are blessed with four kids. 17 years, um, 12, 8, and 1 and a half. <laughs> and we had our last son in the U.S. last year, September. So he's a U.S. citizen. Amen. All right. We do <coughs> a feeding program. We feed the kids because most of them don't have the opportunity to have lunch in the morning. So we give them um, um, lunch um, every day. And it's costly to take care of 200 kids. So they are eating rice. Our stable food in Liberia is rice. We eat rice with variety of soup. Um, here they are. Yes. They are doing an exam. All right, that is the, that's where we have the school right now, this, uh, where we used to worship before in a community called Smart Row. We had a long hall where we used to be, where we started the church. So when we left the church and moved to our 
present worship center, we've turned that into a school building. And then you see that we, we cut partitions so they can have time to learn. But the challenge is that when I'm teaching here, the next person will hear because the partition is called just a black bowl that is between them. It's not a wall. So those, these are the kids we take care of in class. All right. Okay, we intend to build this um, three-story school building to serve two purposes. One will be for academic, and in the afternoon, we intend to have vocation school. As I said earlier on, uh, our community is a very poor community, and most of the children that have become um, adult, like 18, 19, don't have the opportunity to go to school. Some are dropped out of high school. So we want to have a vocation program where we can enroll them to empower them to have skills for the job market. We have young girls who are getting pregnant without any support, you know, because nothing to do. Some men that have money usually abuse them because they have and they don't have. So we want to um, have a vocation program where we will enroll them free of charge to be able to educate them for the job market. So that is the, the plan, <coughs> the second floor plan of the school. It will have 21 rooms, including library. <coughs> okay, we have already started the program, the school. <coughs> when I came this year um, to the US, this is my second time to the US this year. I came um, in May and I went back July and I was blessed with some funds and I started the foundation. So that is the, the space we have. We are using right behind the church, right behind the cathedral, we are putting the school there. So these are the materials we gather. You can slide. The guys are working. We started the foundation already. Presently, we use about $30,000 for the foundation. It's a little bit swammy. I don't know where you understand that word swam. I mean, a lot of water is there. So we spend a lot of money. This is part of the project. All right. Okay. The guy in the red is my brother in law. It's my in law, my wife's um, brother. He's the one, um, the engineer for the project. He uh, oversees almost all my project. So he's in charge. Here he is working with his guys. Most of these guys are part of the church, some of them are volunteers doing the job because we really don't have money to pay them, but few of them are paid, but bulk of them are um, working on a free or volunteer basis. All right, right now that's where we are. <coughs> we have paused the project because a lot of, we out of fund, we intend to cast the foundation. Where it is, we need to pull that into it to reach at the level of all the bl blocks that you won't be able to see the bricks anymore, and then we'll pour concrete on it. So we are in need of $25,000 just for the first phase. We are trusting God to complete the first phase of the project. Now, most of these kids, um, as I said, is a free school. We are also believing God for sponsorship. Each child just need a 200 US dollars that 200 euros that I would take out of the child tuition, the school fees, I mean the school fees rather, um, books, feeding, and uniform. Every year we can just have a person who will sponsor a child. And we are trusting God that Pastor Jeff will come to Liberia to see what we are doing because we want you to know that it is genuine we believe most people have come and said we are doing this in Africa and they don't have anything and we, we, are comp we are sure of that. But as I said, in Harrisburg, we are genuine and you can follow up on Facebook and see what God is using us to do. We also want you to um, know that the staff, that is we have 15 teaching staff, tech team are teaching and then two are non-teaching staff. We have the security and the cook who does the cooking for the kids. And we don't, most of them are volunteers. We just gave them 20 US dollars in a bag of rice per month, which is not enough. 
So we are also believing God that someone can sponsor or pay uh, a teacher just a hundred dollars per month. It will really do well with us. So thank you so much for listening. I'm open for questions. <coughs> Yes, it has. Did you guys hear me clearly understood? Yeah. Um, question, yes, sir. 200. Yes. Did we reduce some of break? We have... Um, the school is running quarter, like the U.S., you have September to June, that's how we run the program, from September to June. So we have four quarters, three months make a quarter, three months make a quarter. Yes, yeah, so they enrolled uh, like that. Uh, we also need school supplies, like books, pencil, book bags, tablets for the kids. Um, the school is six years now, but the church is 12 years. Next year, we'll make our 12 years, but the school is six years. We've been running six years. We've been running by faith. And I started coming to the U.S. 2016. So we started the school long before I came to the U.S. Um, from here, I'm going to New York, and I'm going back to Liberia next Saturday, the 22nd. But I've been around for three to four weeks now, and I came last, last month, the 16th of last month, I came, and I'm going back on the 22nd. I come, sometimes spend one month moving around, soliciting funds for the project. Everyone is quiet. <laughs> Can you talk to me, please? <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Glad to hear that. Yes, brother. Oh, no, the rebel war was um, 20 to 25 years ago, since 1990. So we are free. There's peace everywhere. We don't have any problem anymore. Yeah, the whole, in fact, the whole country is saved. Yeah, we don't have any problem. I'm just telling what we experienced 20 years ago. Uh, yes, um, first of all, I was born in a Christian home. My late father was a bishop, so I grew up in the church, grew up in a great family where I was taught the Torah, and I went to school, graduated from high school, and I sensed the call of God to move into ministry. I went to Bible college, I graduated, and I started the church in 20, 2007. That's when I raised the first church. I did work with other churches as praise and worship leader, um, I work in a choir, and then gradually I navigated to the call of God and to move into my own ministry. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Uh, Pastor and I work together. If you need any additional information, you can see, get to Pastor. He will explain better. Like the pictures, um, the PowerPoint will be here. And we have uh, a little form that <coughs> a sponsor can fill in to sponsor the kids if you want to. Yeah. And the, um, the great thing is that we trust in God when past Pastor will be with us next year by the God, God's grace and I believe when he comes, he will see what we're doing for himself, and then probably he will bring, I know he will bring back um, a lot of information so you guys can work with. But we really need your help. 
we need your help with the kids and most especially the school project is huge. As you can see, it's very huge. And we're doing it stage by stage. And the first stage is the foundation. If we can cast the foundation between now and then, maybe in March, it will be a great thing for us. And we start raising the walls. That the kids need to be comfortable to learn. They really not comfortable right now. All right, can we rise, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for such a great opportunity to be in your presence. Your word said, wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in their midst. We are sure that you are here this morning to bless us by your Torah. May your word um, touch our hearts. May your word bless us. I decreed and declared that the sick will be healed this morning. The captive will be set free. Those that are broken will receive courage. Those that are down, they will be encouraged to face the future with so much hope and aspiration. We thank you even as we move towards the next year. We pray that you will be glorified. May you cause us to see 2019 and beyond in good health. In the name of Yeshua Amashir. Amen. Please be seated. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25, and I will be briefly talking about the wonders, engaging the wonders in the word. The word of God is so powerful. Wrapped in the word are blessings that we need to access. If we can be like the Berean church that goes back every time whenever they were taught to search for themselves, then we will make a better life in the last days. Because we are in the last days, and we are in the last days of the last day. Meaning, time is short, and a lot of religions, a lot of teachings are rising up. But we can um, rest assured and be secure if we learn to search the word of God for ourselves. The Bible says in James 1.22, it says, Be ye doer of the word, and not hearers on it, deceiving your own self. So it becomes a deception when you just hear the word and you don't do it. It is it's the doing of the word that gives you freedom. It is the doing of the word that gives you blessings. So when you hear the word, and don't be the doer of the word. The word of God says you are deceiving yourselves. And it's become so pathetic when you have self-deception. You are not able to tell yourself the truth. This is where I go wrong. This is where I need to, to, to strengthen myself. The next verse says, but if, you, if any be a hearer of the word and not the doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetting what manner of man or woman he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue, that is the right word, and continue, and continue therein. So, there's, there's another thing to look in it for a while and stop. To read it for a while and stop. But it becomes a blessing when you continue in it. The continuation of the word, that's what brings the blessings. Many just look at the word for a while and put the word down. But we need to navigate to a place where we continuously look in the word. We continuously search the scripture that where we can find out what God is saying to us in this time. Can I hear amen? amen. And be not forgetful here, but doer of the word. This man or woman shall be blessed in his deeds. So you see, it is doing the word that brings about blessings. It's not about 10 steps to prosperity, 15 steps to prosperity. No. 
You can have all the steps. You can have all the goals. Set goals. Uh, set objectives. But when you don't have the word, when you lack the word, you are not going to be blessed. It doesn't matter how many steps you have been taught. It doesn't matter how many keys you have been taught. There is no other keys that is more powerful than the word of God. So that is why we need to get hold of the word to make the word our lifestyles. We must be believers who have the word on the inside. When you are shy though, you will fall by the wayside. It's time to go deeper. It's time to be rooted. Hallelujah. It's time to tell yourself, I don't need to, I don't have to be a shadow believer. I need to search God's word for myself. Maybe pastor said this, but let me go back and search it. Because when I know God for myself in these last days, I will be victorious. Can I hear amen, church? So wrap in the word. The first thing we must understand that the word of God carries the power of God that empowers earth for dominion. The word dominion means to take charge. To be in control. If we will be in control of life, we must understand that the word carries that power. Wrapped in the word is the power of God that will put us in charge. When you have the word of God, you have the power of God. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. Somebody shout power. Can I hear you? Shout power. It is the power of God unto salvation. The word salvation from the Greek means sozo. To be saved, to be delivered, to be healed, to be preserved. So the word of God brings salvation. The word of God brings healing. The word of God brings deliverance. So if you are sick this morning, you can be healed by the word. If you are bound this morning, you can be delivered by the word. If you are oppressed this morning, wrapped in the word is deliverance. So Paul said, I'm not ashamed. It is the power of God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick. It is fast. Faster than the speed of light. And powerful. Not just the word is quick, but it is powerful. And I'd like you to know this morning that the word of God is coming to heal you of every sickness in the name of Yeshua Amashir. The word is powerful. Stop looking for man's knowledge. Get in the word. Right in the word is power to heal. Right in the word is power to deliver. Right in the word is power to take your child out of drugs addiction. Right in the word is the power of God to transform you from nobody to somebody. The word can take you from the back and bring you in the front. In the word is power. It's quick and powerful. And sharper than any two double-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing and son of the soul and spirit. End of the joint and marrow. And is the descender of the thoughts and intents of men. These are things the word does. It discerns your thoughts. What are you thinking about? The word can discern it. I was telling pastor, I say, I may be from Africa, or I am from Africa, but I don't think low of myself. I'm not a mediocrat. I believe that there is something in me that you need to hear. Amen. The word is powerful. If you have the word, you can face every challenge in your life. Psalm 66 verse 7 says, He rooted by his power forever. That is the word. His eyes behold the nation and let not the rebellion exalt himself. Sila. Number two thing I'd like you to know that the word, the word is spirit and life that overpowers all evil spirits. The word of God is the is spirit and in his life. John chapter 6 verse 63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing, but the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The ruah. The word of God is spirit's life. You need a life. 
And that life is in the word. If you access the word, you will receive the light. The zoe. You need it. It's not just a mere book in your hands. Many of us carry the Bible in our hands, carry the Torah in our hands, and don't even have time to look through it. We are busy, rushing to job. We don't Facebook on Twitter. But when the enemy comes, it would not be Facebook that will save you, nor Instagram. When challenges come, Instagram will not save you. What will save you is the world you know. The amount of word you have on the inside determines your victory. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was confronted. In fact, the Bible says he was led by the spirit of the Lord in the wilderness. He was not led by demons. The Holy Spirit led him. So what happens when you are led into temptation? What happens when things come your way? What do you do? How do you face it? And some people, because they don't have the word, the last option is to commit suicide. I can't anymore. It's enough. I can't handle it. But here, I mean, you can face every challenge or challenges and overcome it when you have the word on the inside of you. The devil came, and the Bible says, he spoke the word. It is written. It is written. What do you say when you are faced with challenges? When the bill is so high, when the mortgage is so high, when your kids are giving you trouble, what do you say? When the, when, when, when the paycheck is not enough to, to take care of all the responsibility, what do you do? When all hell is broken loose, what do you do? When the insurance is not coming on time, what do you do? Jesus will face and say, it is written. I came to encourage you this morning, no matter what you face, let the devil know that it is written. You can overcome. Can I hear amen? He spoke the word. The next thing I'd like you to know that Jesus, the word, is a stone in Zion. And everything that comes against the word is grounded into powder. Nothing can overcome the word. The word is powerful. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my word. So I made up my mind to stick to the word. Not man philosophy. But the word. Matthew 21 44 says, And whosoever shall fall on this stone, Jesus, Yeshua, shall be ground broken. But on whomsoever it fall, it shall be ground him to powder. That's how powerful the word is. John 1 verse 1 to 3 In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the words were God. All things. Were made by him. Everything today was made by the word. So if you want everything, go for the word. If you want prosperity, go for the word. If you want healing, go for the word. You want good health, go for the word. If you are bound with cancer, you can be healed by the word. Healing is in the word. All things were made by him. All things. Absolutely. All things. There is nothing that was made. Not through him. Everything was made by the word. And guess what? You can get anything you need by the word of God. i like you to know, church, that the revelation of the word is the light that scatters all. All the powers of darkness. You must have a personal encounter with the word. When the word leaves from the page of the Bible, it's no more a logos. It becomes a revelation. It reveals word to you. 
It is the revealed word to you that gives you the power to face the devil. I know who I am. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Because while you have a revelation of the word. It's not what people told you. You have encountered it yourself. Psalm 119 verse 130 says, The entrance of the words gave a light. And it gave an understanding to the simple. When the words enters your life, it gives you light. <laughs> when the words enter your life, when it overcomes you, when it consumes you, it gives you light. You can face your fear when the word is on the inside of you. How many, how much of God's word you have in you guarantees your victory in life? Let's go for the word. Let's settle down with the word. Let's search the word. It will give you light. The review word is the revelation. What is God saying to you? You may have heard what your pastor said, but what is God saying to you? What have you heard from God? It is what you heard from God yourself that can empower you to succeed. I've heard that God told me that I will be great. So it doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter what people tell me. It doesn't matter my color. It doesn't matter my nation. I know who I am. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the first and not the last. That's what God says and I believe it. If you have a review word, that is a revelation, you can face your fear. What has God said to you? We are about to go into 2019. What is God saying about your 2019? Have you heard from him? You need a revelation of the word. That is the light of the word. John chapter 1 verse 5 and 9 says, The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That was the true light, which lighted every man that came into the world. When you have the word, you have the light of God. As I wrapped up this morning, I'd like you to know that Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3, Arise, shine, for your light is come. Can I hear amen? amen. There is a light in this church, and the light is the word of God. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and grant darkness of people, but... The Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. To thy light. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. If you have the word of God, you are bound to shine in life. Let's go for the word. Let's go for the word. We need it in the last days. Search the word for yourself. Finally, I'd like you to know when we operate by the revelation of the word of God, we flow in supernatural breakthrough. When we operate by the revelation of the word, that's what I mean, keeping me. I know what God says. I know what God says. I'm not distracted. I'm focused because I have a revelation of what God is saying. If you have a revelation of what God is saying about your life, you can walk in God's blessings. What have you heard from God? You need the word. You can get hold of that word from your personal studies. How many times do you put in to read the word? We're so busy. Work, 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 bills, work, bills, work, bills. But have you given God a little bit of time to search the scripture yourself? It's important. It's important. 
Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 13. I'll just read one or two verses. Say, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe all his commandments which shall command thee this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee above high nation of the earth. And all these blessings shall come. Come and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. When you hearken to God's voice, if you obey God's word, you don't have to struggle to be blessed. Your blessings are wrapped to the obedience of God's words. Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witnesses. Let us obey the word. We have many people today that have itching ears. Everything is grace, grace. No, it's not everything. It's not grace. There are precepts in the word we need to obey. Paul says, shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Shall we live anyhow? No. We need to check our lives by the word of God. If we hacking, if we obey, then we will walk in blessings. I pray for us this morning that the word should take first place in our lives, not man's opinion, not man's philosophy. I charge you. Get to the word yourself and see what God says. What is God saying? Or what have God said to you? Is the personal word you heard from God, from his word, that will keep you standing, that will keep you moving forward. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his continent to shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua Amashiach. Amen. That one verse. Can you find it, Ashley? Uh, into powder. Breaking you into powder. What was that verse, Pastor? Matthew 21. It was in the PowerPoint. Let's go back to where. There, Matthew 21, 44. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. I found that to be very powerful <coughs> because a lot of times we're very stubborn. You know, we're waiting and we're, we won't surrender to God. And when we fall on him, what does he do? The only way we can be whole is to be broken, right? And sometimes it's very hard for us to come. And then what does God say? If you wait and I have to come on you, you're grounded into powder. So I want us just to stand before the Lord. You know, it was a very powerful word. We appreciate, Pastor. And I, you know, there are areas in your life, maybe you need a healing, maybe you need a deliverance, maybe you just are struggling with some things. I want to invite you to come to the altar, and I want you to take to heart Matthew 21, 44, because I want you to come to this altar and say, Father, I want to fall on you. There are some things in my life I need to change, but there's some things that I need from you. There's some things that's going on in my family, and I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do all these things and maneuver it. But you know what? I need to surrender, and I need to fall on you. And that means when I'm broken, that means I'm yielding everything up to you. If that's you, I want you to come as, as we worship the Lord a little bit. <clears throat> and I just want you to stretch forth your hand. And maybe pastor will just come and lay hands on you and pray for you wherever you are at. Um, and, uh, but I, I want us to surrender to him this morning. Uh, because we don't want him to fall on us and grind us to powder. I'd rather just fall on him and be broken. Amen.
my every fear, silencing my every fear. And I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. And I believe in you. And I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Do you need one this morning? does impossible is reaching out to make me whole reaching out to make me whole the one who put death in its place his life is throwing through my veins his life is flowing through my veins and i believe in you i believe in you you're the god of miracles and i believe in you and i believe You're the God of miracles. And I believe in you. Believe in him. I believe in you. Fall on him. You're the God of miracles. And I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. The God who was and is to come. The power of the risen one. The God
said this before it's just an act sometimes of when you're looking forward and you see all the stuff that you're going through is just change your perspective and lift up your head and refocus to the one who sits on the throne to the one who is in control chaos can be all around you and if you view your chaos then that's what you see and that's what you're involved in but if you can just elevate your head to the hills Elevate your head to the throne. Keep your eyes on him. He was and is and is to come. He is the God of miracles. Let's just say, I believe in you again. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I 
Turn to someone, tell them he's still on the throne. He's still on the throne.
You're the God of miracles. And I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. And I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. And I believe. Give him some praise if he's a miracle-working God in your life. Amen. Just take a seat for a moment before we have the children come. We're going to take an offering for Pastor Samuel. So if you want to make that out to Lion of Judah, we'll take it African style, which means you bring it up and put it in a bucket. So um, we want to bless him. So um, prepare your offering now. Worship team, come on up. <coughs> and uh, Sister Millie asks... Don't forget, um, if we do it African style, we do it when you come, you dance. Okay? Hallelujah. Father, bless those that are giving. Bless those, Father, as they come with the joy that you will give them back that same joy, Father, a hundredfold. Bless the offerings that are going to Pastor Samuel, Father. Bless that ministry and those children. And, and Father, and continue to enlarge and supply. And we'll give you praise in the name above every name, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah.
children in congregation. Simba. Simba. Hallelujah. Father, we come before you in the name of Yeshua, and we thank you for every child that's represented underneath this prayer shawl. Father, let them come to the saving knowledge of you as the Messiah, if they do not already know you. Father, fill them with your Ruach HaKadosh, Father. Lord, let their footsteps be guarded by you, and let them do and walk in the ways that you would have them walk. Father, let the word of God reign supreme in their lives, Father, Lord, as they serve you with all their heart and all their soul and all their mind. We ask, God, that you will protect them, put a hedge around them, Father. Lord, in this special in this time of this evil days, Father, guard their minds and their hearts and their ears. May they hear you. May they see you. May they know you. And may they walk in your ways. We thank you for them, Father. Bless them. We thank you for each one represented here, whether they are a Rachel, a Rebecca, a Leah, Father, or a Sarah. Whether they are, Father, a Joseph, or a Ephraim, or a Manasseh, or a Peter, or a Paul. Father, we just thank you for their lives. And we ask, Lord, that you will continue to watch over them. In the name above every name, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Lift your hands to receive the priestly blessing this morning before we go to the Oneg. Yehovah, he who exists, kneel before you, presenting gifts, and will guard you with a hedge of protection. And Yehovah, he who exists, will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing order, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. And Yehovah, he who exists, will lift up wholeness of being and look upon you, and he will set in place all you need to be, whole and complete. May Yehovah grant all the desires of our hearts, fulfill all our purposes and all our petitions, May Yehovah hear from heaven, quickly answer all our requests. Save us in the day of adversity. And in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, defend us from our enemies, from poverty and from bondage. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. See you in the Oneg.